Hello, hello, hello. How is everybody doing today? Come on in, come on in. My name is Thomas Brush. I make indie games for a living. Today, we're going to jump inside of Unity. And first, we're going to discuss how we're taking my current project and we're going to highly polish it. And then we're going to create a pitch deck. And I just want to discuss all of this and how we're actually going to secure funding from publishers or platforms. I've done this multiple times, so I'm just going to try and do this live throughout the coming, I guess, months and see if I could prove to you guys that this funding secret really works. So we're going to talk about that. Really quickly, I want to let you all know that this week is a special week for all of my live stream videos because we're sponsored by Full Time Game Dev. Full Time Game Dev is my online program. This obviously supports my studio, supports my games, but more importantly, it supports you guys. And I first just want to tell you a little bit about this. Um, it's 50% off currently. There are only five coupon codes below. These always sell out during my live streams. In fact, they sold out yesterday. Um, really quick, congratulations to David, Jerry, Michael, Diago, Kevin, Mika, and, and these are from yesterday and the day before. So every day we have five coupon codes, 50% off for full-time game dev. So you're gonna learn how to do this, what we're looking at right here, how to get funding from crowdfunding, how to get funding from publishers and platforms, and also just how to hit the Steam front page and sell your games. I've done this, I'm gonna show you how to do it too. And on top of all of this, this massive 30 hour program with over 3000 students, on top of all of it, you're gonna get training on C Sharp, Unity, how to make a 2D game, how to make a 3D game, how to make a 3D game with no code, how to make a 2D game with code. So really you're gonna learn everything that I've learned in the last decade of becoming what I am now, which is a full-time indie game developer. So if you're interested, check that out below. Otherwise guys, let's jump into Unity and get started. By the way, guys, feel free to download my free 2D game kit below. It's totally free. It's my treat to you. I used this exact 2D game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days, and then I got to play it in front of his subscribers, which was really awesome. Um, so download that. Use it however you want. It's my treat to you. Yeah. Okay. Okie dokie. So... Let's talk really quick about how I'm going to pitch this game to publishers and platforms. And obviously guys, I can't make any promises that I'm gonna get funding. I just know that I've done it three times prior to, to this game. So this is my fourth game that I'll secure funding. There's a lot of different ways to secure funding for your, for your game, uh, for your demo really. And what we've got here is a two level demo. It's not even done yet. Um, but we're gonna start pitching this to publishers and platforms. And by platforms, I mean Epic Games, I mean Google Stadia, I mean, um, Nintendo Switch, Xbox, Microsoft, uh, Sony, all those platforms. Um, the way that we're going to do this is the first thing you want to do is just think, okay, let's make a 15 minute highly polished demo. Now for me, it's probably going to be about 30 minutes. Um, it's going to be hyper polished. It's going to look great. It's going to feel great. It's going to feel well, like we've got currently. Um, obviously the game, when the publisher plays it and when the platform plays it, they're going to know pretty quick. They're gonna know pretty quick if it fits within their portfolio of games. Typically what platforms do like Epic Games or maybe Apple Arcade or maybe publishers, what they typically do is they go, well, we want this kind of game for this year or this budget. We have a budget for these kinds of games. So just cause you get rejected by a publisher or a platform doesn't mean you don't have a good game. It just means it's not in their current budget um, for that kind of game. So we're gonna hope that a game like this is somewhere in any of these platforms portfolios um, or or will fit into their portfolio. I can tell you right now, this is probably not gonna fit into uh, Apple Arcade because Apple Arcade makes family friendly games. This game's not very family friendly. That said, I have worked with Apple Arcade in the past. Um, it doesn't mean I don't wanna work with them. It's just this game right here currently isn't probably in their portfolio. So you finish up the demo, you get a pretty high, hyper polished demo, 15 to 20 minutes. You build it out, you upload it to Steam, and then you secure Steam keys. That's a whole other process. But I think it's really important to note that if you go to my website, atmosgames.com, this is my studio, um, you can see here 
that you want a really beautiful but simplistic, I say simplistic just to save you guys time, um, but you really want a simplistic, clean website, just use something like Squarespace. Um, so I've, I've created, um, let's see here, there's no press kit for father yet, but I can show you the Neversong press kit. So this press kit is obviously for press, but prior to it being a press kit, it was basically a pitch deck, right? A pitch deck or a Bible. All it is is a one single website with everything on it that a publisher is going to need, okay? Now I would have a big button here that says get your private Steam key. When they click it, it automatically emails them a Steam key. That's what I would do. And I would probably use like Humble Bundle or something. His Humble Bundle, they should have like a uh, little widget you can download or integrate into your website and it, it'll say, it give them a, a, a free key. So that press key or that beta key, there it is, download the demo. So that press key along with a beautiful logo and like the, the most beautiful website honestly you've ever made, um, any, any quotes, anything like that, you want it all in your press kit. You want this publisher to salivate about your game. The thing is, it's so important to know to think think like a publisher and think like a platform. Again, they are gonna know. They're gonna know right off the bat if the if the game works with their portfolio, just by the graphics you've got on your on your press kit in that short demo. So instead of trying to make something big and expansive and long, um, with a, the story all laid out and and sending them the plot and all that stuff, really you just want to send them a taste but it's a, it's a beautiful, delicious taste. There's this cheese that my wife gets. It's from like England or something. It's like one little piece of this cheese is all you need for you to be satiated. The same is true <laughs> with your press kit, okay? That's an odd metaphor, but that's generally what you wanna do, a tiny little piece. And then what you do is you write out all of the different platforms you're considering. That's Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, Although they don't really, I haven't seen them do a lot of deals like maybe Game Pass, um, Stadia, Epic Games. Here's the thing, a lot of you probably are thinking, Thomas, um, Epic Games, I don't want to sell my soul to Epic Games. Well, the way these, these deals work out is sometimes they're like exclusivity into perpetuity. I know that's a, that's a mouthful, but and it's an exclusive deal, that platform only for perpetuity, that's infinity, right? Sometimes it's like, no, 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 we just want six months. Sometimes it's, no, we want six months exclusive, but really we just don't want you competing on Steam. But you can, I don't care if you release it on Apple Arcade or uh, Apple iOS, right? The same is true with like Apple Arcade. They'll say, oh, we don't care about Steam. That's not our competitor. We care about Google. So you can't release on Google, okay? So the future of funding for games, the, the future of making money it's going to include selling Steam keys, okay? It's gonna include that, selling copies on Switch, Xbox. But in my opinion, the majority of your income might very well, and I know this is gonna be true for me, it's gonna be platform deals. So here's an exclusive deal for six months, here's 100K. Here's an exclusive deal for four months um, for mobile, here's 70 grand, right? Game Pass, we're gonna do a $50,000 deal for you but it's only gonna be like a two week game pass thing. That's where the money is. Humble bundle, same thing. I think that's where the money is. And so you can accomplish that. You can start signing deals with just small little demos and press kits like this. So I wanted to give you guys a quick tidbit, tidbit and kind of let you know that's what we're doing here. Um, so as I do this live, um, my goal is to show you sort of the process of how this happens. And so right now, currently, we're just trying to get this demo done um, by the end of March. Once we get the demo done, I'm just gonna throw up a website, make a, make a quick trailer with some beautiful screenshots, and we can start pitching this to, honestly, the plan is hundreds and hundreds of companies until I get the deal I want, right? And that's, that's what you guys should do as well. Okay, <laughs> hopefully that was very helpful to you guys. Um, so let's jump inside of Unity and start making some tweaks to our demo. Um, yesterday, what we did was we actually created a, uh, let's see here, a working copy of this level called Sodom's Hollow. And in it, we had a drawbridge here, but I heard yesterday from Felipe, 
Felipe is my 3D modeler. He mentioned to me that the drawbridge is no longer working, and it's so funny because whenever you're making a game, in a day, things will break. It's almost as if they break on their own. What is that called? That's, that's some, uh, what's it called when the universe is expanding and slowly dissolving into chaos? Is it entropy? Um, it's just like that with games. It's like it, gravity is always on that house of cards and it's just gonna crack and crumble over time. <laughs> that's how it feels at least. So let's, I guess, hit play and, and see if we can get this draw bi drawbridge working like we did yesterday, okay? So I'm hanging out over here. Okay, let's go ahead and move our character controller to where the actual scene camera is here so that we'll spawn right here. So what we can do is go to align with view and that's just with my character controller selected and now he's right there, okay? Now let's hit play. Sing is that singularity? I don't think that's singularity. Something's wrong with the fog. Maybe. Something's wrong. Oh, the post-processing effects aren't here for some reason. But anyway, let's hit, let's shoot this and see what we get. Okay, it works. All right, so there's a lot of issues here. I have no idea why there's scaling issues. Um, I'm I'm no idea, honestly. Uh, so that's that's frustrating. So let's go ahead and move that draw bridge. Um, let's make sure Felipe isn't working in the scene. So I'm gonna message Felipe in Discord. Um, I'm going to say, give me one hour to fix a few things. No, how about give me half an hour to fix a few things in Sodom's hollow. Does that work? We'll see what he says. Um, what I want to do is get this drawbridge fixed. And so I want to double check Sodom's hollow, the, the actual one, not the working copy one. Again, guys, the reason we're doing a working copy is because, um, Felipe is currently working in this scene and you can't have multi. Yep. Look at this. We still got issues. Why is that happening? What on earth? So it looks like our drawbridge is screwed up. Let's hit play and make sure any profiles are fixed are in the scene. Okay. So we've got a post-processing profile here. I mean, it looks great. Um, so I'm going to throw up the screen really quick. All right. By the way, those of you just joining us, just remember that this video is sponsored by fulltimegamedev.com. I know I'm doing a lot of ad reads this week, and the reason why is because it's a special week. This is a special week because Full Time Game Dev is 50% off for just five people in these live streams. And every time I do a video, so for the last two days, they sell out in probably two hours. Um, yesterday, I think it was three hours when they sold out. Um, but they, they sell out quickly. I'm going to clean up, fix this mesh renderer here. So if you're interested in joining the program, there's just five left. And I want to congratulate the five of you who joined yesterday. If you joined, let me know in the chat. I'll try and uh, say hi to you. Um, and also, if you're a student, feel free to say hi. But anyway, guys, it's 50% off today, so be sure to check out the link below. You're going to learn everything I've learned in the last decade of making indie games, including 3D game dev, 2D game dev, securing funding from publishers, securing funding on Kickstarter, C Sharp, Unity, all the good stuff. 30-hour program, 3,000 students worldwide, so check it out below. Okay. So, you know, th there's just so many things that broke overnight. It's so weird how that happens. Let's hit play here and see if this drawbridge is long enough. It's not. It's so frustrating. This drawbridge is smaller than it used to be. It's like, what happened? Um, so let's hit play here. Okay. It's frustrating when you're, you're like, you're done with one aspect of a game and you're like, good, let's move on to the next thing. And then it just kind of reverts back to what it was. 2.6 by 2.6. Let's hit play again on the drawbridge. Make sure it falls in the right spot. Okay, good. All right, I think it's good there. Um, I'm going to save that out. And let's take a look and see what's going on with the breakable object script. I'm looking to see what, what this does is if, if we shoot this rope, the rope breaks. Upon breaking, it fires the animation event. So we have an issue here. Uh, let's hit play. Take a look. I'm going to run through here all the way down to my drawbridge. You guys want to hear the sound? 
There we go. Not good? Okay, so there's our drawbridge. Okay, it doesn't work for us. There it goes. Okay, there's no sound now. Man, mother effer. Every day there's something wrong. It's so frustrating. Um, and that's just the way it goes, guys. So if you ever feel like things are always breaking, it's not. it has nothing... It has nothing to do with you necessarily. It's just the way it goes. So it looks like we have some issues here with the animation events. How many of you in the chat know what I'm talking about? Where things, they just break and you don't know why. I think it has to do with the sound for or the audio source. Let's take a look here. Ah, yes, I think it's the audio source. So we're going to scale it up pretty big so that you, you're forced to hear it. Okay, so we're scaling up the max distance to like, I mean, honestly, we could do something like 50, yeah. And the minimum distance is gonna be pretty big too. I, I want the player to hear it pretty much all the time. Um, the reason why we're not doing a 2D sound though is because if this drawbridge perhaps for some reason falls in the distance, I don't wanna hear it, but I wanna hear it if I'm close to it. Every day, no matter what the engine is. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. Also, guys, I just wanted to let you know, thank you so much for supporting the channel and always hanging out. Um, I love live streaming with you guys. It's actually my favorite aspect of this channel. I'm considering just doing that only. Um, and then also some podcasts. Um, just talking to game devs. So I just wanted to let you guys know I'm really, really grateful for all of you hanging out with me all the time. It means the world to me. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Uh, drawbridge works just fine. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna go to over here. I'm gonna bring in those changes we made yesterday into the, no, this is the regular copy. I'm gonna go to the working copy. I'm gonna grab a few things here. The first thing is this key. I'm gonna copy this key. What is this? There's another key, okay. Copy these two keys. I'm gonna copy the what else do I want to grab? There's a key up here. Yep. So we added these two keys to the working copy, but I forgot to add them to the actual game. After we do this, we're going to be tweaking some of the things related to the skybox. I want to add a big elevator into the sky, in the skybox. So we're going to do that. Um, let's go over to the cemetery over here. And I also want to grab, okay, we got a door here. We got a torch. So I'm going to hold shift or yep hold shift and I'm gonna grab the torch let's see here ah yes all of this I'm gonna copy all that stuff so these are all of our changes from yesterday in fact I'm actually just gonna bring these keys all the way down into this right here I have this working copy here of all these what I mean is a, a folder here essentially of all these things that I changed yesterday and we're just gonna copy them into oh yeah we got those trees too with the dead bodies. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm going to copy all that over into the Sodom's Hollow. Um, yep. I'm going to paste them in. Okay. But before I do that, I want to make sure that the shed is deleted because I believe if we delete that and then paste, yep, we have a new shed there. Okay. This is not supposed to be locked, so we're gonna fix this door really quick and then we're gonna move on to the skybox, okay? Um, this is not supposed to be locked. The shed door is supposed to be locked, but that's that should be good. Yep, that's gonna be locked for us. And also, um, where am I? Over here, there's one door gate here. This is gonna be locked with a blue key, okay? So let's go ahead and lock this up with the blue key. So that's just a really cool system that AJ put together for us. AJ is the, he's not the, he's, I guess he's the, the, the coder of the core system, um, but he is not like the only coder. I'm doing a lot of the code too, but he is the coder of the core system. It's kind of like source engine in a lot of ways because we're making a sort of a Half-Life inspired game. Okay, I'm gonna run through this level really quick. Hit play. Leo Istis, you're asking me if you should join full-time game dev. I'll let the uh, I'll answer quickly, but guys, if you're in full-time game dev, 
um, if you're a student, feel free to answer his question. Um, but uh, my answer is, I will never tell you that you should join anything. But I will say that 70% of the course or 60% of the course is how to run a business um, as a game developer. So securing funding, no matter what your game is, 3D or 2D, how to secure funding from publishers, from Kickstarter. Actually, one of my students just raised over $130,000 on Kickstarter. Um, this was a legit, you know, my student. And he, uh, I can't shoot that for some reason. Uh, securing funding and hitting the Steam front page. It's a lot of marketing stuff that I, I think a lot of you, and also reaching out to publishers. So yeah, anyway. So this right here, for some freaking reason, is not breaking. So anyway, let's let's bring the character. I want to I want to be absolutely sure that this is working. Let's bring the character controller all the way over here, and I need to push this because Felipe's waiting on me. Um, so I'm going to go to align with view. There we go. Zero it out, and then hit play here. Okay. Okay. So there's our our locked door. Good. Okay. So I'm going to remove it really quick so I can get through to the drawbridge because I don't have that key. And let's just see if the drawbridge works. It's a real shame, I can't get it to work. Oh, there we go, okay. I might just need to make that mesh collider bigger. So let's, let's do that really quick and then we're gonna call it a day with the drawbridge and then we're gonna move on to the skybox, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go inside of the drawbridge and instead of the rope being a mesh collider, I'm gonna remove that and I'm actually gonna add a box collider to the best of my abilities to where that cut can occur, okay? Um, so it's really pretty simple, actually. I'm just gonna take this box collider, and I asked Felipe yesterday during the live stream he was watching, and I said, and by the way, guys, my team likes to show up in the chat, so be, be sure to give them a warm welcome, and also let my team know, or I, I'm letting my team know right now, guys, be nice, uh, but... <laughs> Uh, I have my team usually shows up uh, and Felipe was sh he showed up and I said you know what Felipe I think we should make this look like you can cut it because there's a lot of ropes in the game and I would hate for people to be like well why can I shoot this rope but not any others and the answer is this one's really ready to go it's basically cut okay so we've got this uh, box collider here I, I, I don't want the player to be able to stand on it though you know, I don't know if I mind that entirely. I wish you could rotate the box collider. That's like the real trouble here. Uh, so it's it's a, it's definitely a shame. I wonder if we could do a mesh collider and then ma just make it convex. Let's see what we get with a convex mesh collider. It doesn't bug me, honestly. Let's let's take a look here. Gordon Arbor is the um, one of my interns. He's hanging out in the chat. He's a, he's one of the developers. He's really brilliant, but he's he's a spicy sort of mean, nasty kind of person. So, so yeah, Gordon. I'm kidding. How many people are on the team? We've got like five people working on the project, but it's not like they're all full time. We've got one full-timer, well, two full-timers, me and Felipe, and then we've got a lot of different part-time contract workers and stuff, and interns and all that stuff. Okay, so the, the drawbridge is done. That works fine. I don't hate it, um, which is always good. You don't want to hate, hate things. I think overall we're good. We've got the dead bodies hanging from the trees here. You always want that, so that's good. <sighs> that might be really fun to be able to break. But anyway, let's not worry about that. We need to get the game done. All right, I'm gonna push this really quick for Felipe, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna show my screen because I'm gonna be doing a few things, pushing a few things. Um, so Felipe messaged me here. He said, let me know when you're Gucci. All right, I'm gonna be Gucci here in just a sec. So I'm in, using GitHub desktop and I'm going to push uh, my changes here. So fixed drawbridge in Sodom's Hollow, uh, added locks and keys. And Felipe taught me this, you just write WIP, which is work in progress. 
and then we push. Okay, so we're pushing to GitHub. Next thing I wanna to do today is I really wanted my skybox, you know, you should never under, underestimate the value of a good skybox. Um, what we what I used to do is I used to I used to try and draw out my skyboxes myself, and I can do it. It's just it always looks a little cheap. Um, so we have a new skybox here currently. Let me open it up on my screen here. We have a new skybox here. So this is one I downloaded and then just tweaked the colors. Okay. So we're gonna open this up in Photoshop, and I want mountains, mountains, Gandalf. I want to see them all over here and then a big huge pillar going up so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to download probably another skybox and we're going to call it like toonie mountains or, or we're going to search toonie mountains something like that so let's head on over to the asset store and i'm going to type in stylized mountain skybox okay and see what we get Ooh, what's this one and we're gonna mix these skyboxes currently. Uh, no, that's not gonna work. Let's just type in mountain skybox. We're gonna mix this mountain skybox with the uh, the current skybox we've got. So we really want one that looks kind of like uh, Germany. Ooh, that's kind of cool. I like how this one looks toony. Oh, nice. Woo, those are pretty. Should I buy these? Let's let's keep that in, in place here. I'm gonna keep that in place. Uh, I know you can't see my screen. One sec. Let's go back to the asset store. Okay, uh, let's type it in again. Skybox Mountain. Let's see what else we have. I like these toony looking ones. What's this one? Freeze. I this I okay whatever. Um. Yeah, I like the ones that actually look like they're 3D renderings. Let's keep on heading out, guys. Let's go, go, go. Let's see here. What do we got? 16 terrain packs. No. Something I also like to keep in mind with skyboxes is uh, I want to make sure they're pan panoramic here. All right, so it looks like Scrycrost has a ton of them. Um, let's see here. This kind of... I want them to be cloudy, though. I, I really kind of like the way these look. I think they match the way the game feels. I I'm just not sure. Like, this is the about the only one here. I'm going to cover, like, if we covered the top here, that's the only one that kind of feels like it would work. So, I'm not... Hmm, let's see here. Mountain Skybox, no. I want them to look really, really foggy. Okay. I think what I want to do is I'm I, I'm curious if I could just try it, try and do my own here. So we've got a lot of stuff to delete here. I'm going to delete all this and all this. Let's go to um, let's go to pexels.com. Pexels.com has a lot of like open source free photos. Okay, and I'm just gonna type in mountain and see what we can find here. I want them to look pine tree-ish. That's kind of cool. I'm gonna copy this and we're gonna just slowly bring it in, okay? And I could do this at real time so I can see how it looks um, as we're making the game, okay? So we could scale this down like this and we're gonna put it right at the horizon here. And I believe what we can do is just flip and sort of create a tiling, uh, a tiling, sort of horizon here. Now it's not gonna be like tiling perfectly. Uh, or what I mean is I'm gonna fade out some portions of it so it doesn't look repetitive. But I love working with fog. Fog is a great way uh, to make indie games because when you have a foggy game, you can sort of cheat a lot. 
Not everything is crisp and in focus. Okay, so I'm gonna merge this stuff together here. And we're gonna set it to overlay. There we go. Drop down the opacity here, save it out. And we're gonna jump in Unity. We're gonna hit play. And we're first gonna just see what if we can see it anywhere. You can see it right there. That, that doesn't look bad, actually. I'm pretty surprised. Okay. So the way a skybox works is currently I'm using a panoramic skybox. And so that panoramic skybox, that panoramic skybox is going to require at the horizon things to be squashed because it's a sphere. And so it's very, very far away. Um, I, I think so. So we'll, we'll, we'll double check here. So we're going to set the controller uh, to be at, let's move the controller over to the cemetery because the cemetery gives us a really good vista. So we're going to be right here. Okay. I have my controller selected. I'm going to go to game object, align with view. I want to zero out the rotation though. I don't want it to be rotated and then save. And then now let's take a look at our horizon. Okay. That actually looks pretty, pretty sweet. I kind of like it a lot. I don't know if I want to do much to it. It's cool being able to look down and see it, you know? Okay, let's, let's, let's do a little tweaks here, a couple tweaks. I'm gonna fade out some pieces of it so it doesn't look so repetitive. Actually, we're not gonna do that. Here's what we'll do. Let's get it perfectly looping first. And just the size looking right, all of that. Okay, good, that fades out. Okay. And I'm gonna move this over here and then bring one more over here. I'm gonna merge these together. And I think we might actually wanna scale them down. Whoopsie. We might wanna scale them down to about like this, okay? We'll worry about proper looping on the edges in just a sec. But now, I wanna be able to look out. Okay, cool. I'm gonna go to overlay. Good, save it. Awesome, okay. <sighs> the next thing I wanna do is we're gonna just fade out the pieces that feel repetitive and kind of strange. So stuff like this. Save it, take a look. There we go. So see how it looks like the clouds are now sort of just foggy. We're going to clean up this mountain uh, sort of horizon here. Um, right now I'm going to actually just rasterize this thing. Okay. And I'm gonna bring it over like this. Um, actually, I think we could, what we could probably could do is fill in some areas with the fill tool and just add some texturing. Let's see here, edit. Will this work on transparent stuff? I don't think it will. Preserve transparency. Yeah, we can't. Okay. So I'm gonna do, the, what I'm gonna do here is edit, uh, or select, modify, feather. We're gonna do a feathering of 150. Whoopsie, no. <laughs> we're gonna do a feathering of, let's see, 20. And then we're gonna mask it out. Invert, save, and then bring them back over to about like right here. Let's see here. Let's just try a few things here. See what we can get. Okay. All right, so that top mountain line is, is is not great up here. So what I'm gonna do is actually fade it out. Let's take a look. Not bad, not bad. Um, let's see if we can find one more. Sometimes all you need is the shape. That looks pretty sweet. Let's copy that. 
and we're gonna make uh, tune shaders out of all, or we're gonna make it look more like it's hand painted in just a second. I'm gonna cut this piece. Let's see here. Let's go to contiguous. No, let's do tolerance at 25. We might have to hand do it. Uh, let's see here. Try this, set it to overlay, drop down the opacity, and start throwing in some cool looking mountains sort of hanging out right here. See that, look, it's very subtle. It's very subtle, but overall, I think we're, we're on the right track here. I'm gonna drop down the saturation to zero so it's black and white. That way we're only getting the dark colors. We're not getting any weird hue shifts, okay? Save that. I'm going to bring this over to right here as well. So I just want to feel it out. Maybe you would flip it. Okay, let's take a look. All right. We're definitely getting there. Was it this one? I don't really like those, to be honest. Okay. So, you know, I'm not feeling it. Um, hmm. I'm not feeling it. Let's see if we can find... I kind of want stylized skyboxes. You know? That's, that's what I really want. I want a stylized mountain skybox. The problem with this is we can't rotate things. I just realized. So I can't rotate the, the clouds to make them move, look like they're moving. So I don't know if I want that or not. Hmm. But that does look really good. Hmm. Yeah. We're not gonna worry about the clouds moving for now. Okay guys? We're gonna, we're, what we might do is have an overlay of like a, a plane and it just moves the clouds over top. That might be what we do. I think I even have a script for that. Looping, looping. Yeah, we, have a, we already have a script for a looping texture. So we could, we could do that. I might do that during this live stream. But let's get, let's get these mountains done here, okay? So they're both set to overlay. I'm gonna merge the layers, overlay. And then we're gonna do a, uh, mo like a, I think a filter gallery. You know what we could do, watch this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a tune, a tune effect to this whole thing, okay? I'm gonna turn on my fan one sec. That fire behind me is getting hot. We'll do dry brush, click OK. OK, cool. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to merge all of this together. And then I'm going to do a dry brush. So let's go to filter gallery. And it's going to just make it look stylized. Um, it's not going to be perfect. But you can see here, maybe we do it. Hold on one sec here. Let it load. Okay, so that's ridiculous, right? We don't want that. Um, so the brush detailing, we're gonna turn down along with the texture. So let's wait for it. Turn down the, turn up the brush size, that's fine. Maybe brush detail all the way z at zero. Hmm. Let's try a different one. Number of levels, we'll do a lot. What about brush strokes? Let's try this one. That kind of looks cool. Zoom in a little bit. Yeah, that's cool. Make it a little bit sharper. Save it. Let's take a look.
Thomas, how much does it cost for me to be your music producer? <laughs> I'm not doing any music or any freelance work right now, but I appreciate it. That means a lot. Cool. I like it. It looks cool. Um, I think that uh, what I want to do is do a smart filter over top of it. So we're going to go filter, blur, smart blur is really what it's called. And we're going to go pretty crazy here. Yeah. Click OK. And you're not, what it's going to do is it's going to remove any. You probably can't see it because it's 1080p, but there's like these tiny little thin lines and it sort of ruins the immersion. There we go. See how this looks now like Bob Ross just painted us a sky? I mean, this looks great. Really, really like it. Now what we can do is throw in a gorgeous uh, castle. Okay. So my theory is what we need to do is open up the actual cover art from the game. Okay, so I'm going to open that up. I know my camera's full screen. Give me just a sec. I'm going to get on my computer here. And we're going to find the cover art for father and in that cover art we actually have a background let's see i can actually type it on my cover art menu there it is okay so in the background here there's some there it is there's the background okay so we gonna need to figure out what to do here we have this castle see that that was illustrated by my buddy Santiago. We'll be giving him credit where credit is due, right? But I'm gonna try and incorporate this into the actual skybox, okay? So there's a couple issues here. And we're, so we're, we're gonna try and just match it up. So, and make, sometimes you just have to feel it out uh, first off, let's bring up the the lightness here. Shift the hue, drop the satch or drop bring up maybe um, let me see here. Let me bring up the lightness, and then maybe let's try an overlay. All I want is the shadows to come through. Hmm. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Let's try a different approach. This one's a little bit more painful, but let's go in here and cut out portions. I love this castle. He did such a good job. Ah, I don't want to do it that way. Give me a sec, guys. Let's think here. And see if we can brighten up the image here so it blends pretty seamlessly into the yep and then drop the saturation down there we go we're getting there we're getting there look that oh man we're so close okay there we go ha what I tell you so now I just want that bottom to be a little bit more visible All right, so let's just fill that in all the way up here. I'm actually gonna just squeeze the top of this piece here and just keep squeezing it up. Look at this. So that just, it's gonna go straight into the sky like the Citadel in Half-Life, okay? And then we're gonna fade out the edges. And the bottom, okay? Now, when you're working with this kind of transparency, you want to make sure it's not like it doesn't look like it's actually invisible. So the way you do that is like anytime you see something behind it, you can either blur it heavily, um, like this here as well, or you can try and fill it in. So let's go edit fill and see what we get. Yep. So that fixed it. Um, this right here, I want it to look like the moon is actually in front of, I know that's weird, but in front of the clouds. I think that looks pretty cool. All right, let's save this out and see how it looks. All right.
right. And by the way, guys, just remember, those of you who are just joining us, it's a special week. There's a 50% off coupon below. Just for five of you, there's probably about three left. Um, just judging from, you know, last week. Hey, that looks sweet. Or uh, yesterday. Yesterday, the coupon code sold out pretty fast. So if you're interested in joining uh, full-time game dev, there's five or I think maybe even just, just three coupon codes left below. So we're not, we don't do this all the time. That is so freaking awesome. Wow. I love that. So that moon is creepy. So I think we should scale it down a little bit. It looks a little aggressive um, in scale. No, don't tell me I'm good, guys. I'm not good. My team is good. I'm just sort of taking their art and <laughs> making it work for the game. That is what I freaking wanted. I just got to chill up my spine, down my leg. So I don't know why that's so flat right there. Oh, that's, that's the horizon of the uh, terrain. I mean, good grief. Hey, watch this. You guys are going to love this. We're going to make this moon brighter, okay? So let's draw a vibrant yellow moon. Let's first see if it interacts with the glow like I'm thinking it's gonna. Yep, it is. Okay, good. So now I'm gonna drop down the opacity. And I'm this time I'm going to have to cut. <sighs> Bless me. And the good news with these sort of moody games, you can get away with uh, blurring things and making them look really abstract. I love these little bridges. Those are so cool right there. So I don't know why I'm scratching my nipples. But you can just... You can deal with it, right? The detail here is important, okay? So it's going to be abstract, but I still want to try and get everything I can to make sure the moon's behind it. The reason I have to do this now is Santiago sent me... I don't think the moon was layered, what he sent me. So that's why we have to fix this, okay? So I'm actually going to just move that out, invert it, and then set it to overlay. Or uh, let's see here. I don't really like that. Maybe just set it to white. I'm going to scale it up over here. Yep, there we go. We're going to set this to white. So drop the saturation, increase the vibrance here. Add an outer glow. Always, when in doubt, add an outer glow. There we go. Look at that. Let's hit play. Take a look. Woo! So I think we need to squash everything down because again, guys, it's near the horizon. So it's going to have like this. Uh... That's a freaking huge moon too. I like it. So I think the, the glow is way too intense. Drop that down. Oh, let me let Felipe know I've pushed. Okay, and then what I want to do here, my friends, is actually blur it. Because b behind it, we've actually already got some clean edges. So I'm going to blur it like this. See that? And then drop the opacity down. And that just makes that, that moon just a little bit brighter bef compared to what it was before. Okay, that's pretty cool. I don't know if I like it, to be honest with you. I'm going to drop it. I'm going to drop it. And then we're just going to scale this down. There we go. So we're just going to pull it down closer to the horizon. Save it out. I liked it closer, actually. But I think what we need to do is let's convert it to a smart object, and then we're going to squash it vertically so that it's a perfect circle. It's 
a little too squashed. So it's, you just, it's a real finicky thing working with skyboxes. There we go, and move it over here. Kind of like it being high up. Thank you, Gordon. Guys, please welcome Gordon to the chat. Gordon is my intern. He's been with us for about a month interning, but he's also a um, he's also one of my uh, editors for my YouTube channel. That looks great. Okay, so what I think I want to do is the 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 only thing I'm I pff, Thomas talk normal. I think what I want to do here is using the pencil tool create some vibrant lights that you can see. I just want to try this. I think it might look really cool. We'll do one here. And this is just really a test. I don't want to get too specific here. But what you can do is you can just add a pop of vibrance here like that. See, that's pretty sweet. Add an outer glow and that will make it have like this sort of diffusion, right? Um, we're just going to do a normal color here, no overlay. Opacity, crank it up. There we go. Let's hit play or save it and take a look. That's pretty freaking awesome. Definitely looks like a sci-fi game. It, it, I mean, it looks like a weird sci-fi like medieval Drac Draculian game. So that's freaking awesome. Um, you can even get away with adding a little bit of a hue shift and also obviously we want to add some detailing here. So watch this. If we cut the bottom of this, it actually makes like it's sort of an arched window. Do the same here. We have some, or these could be square windows. Um, you could even do something like this. This one, same thing. So I'm just going to clean these up here, make them look more intentional because they do kind of look like, you know, uh, they're just dots. Let's keep, keep an eye on them here. Yeah, that looks good. Oh my goodness. I'm getting chills and I can hear the, in the background, there's a church bell. I love it. So this, this gives you an idea, and this is something that's so important, guys, with, with your game. Let the player know where they're going, okay? Like if they're making a, if you're making a, a linear game that's sort of story-driven, give them an idea of where they're headed, okay? So this game is all about scaling this building, okay? We're starting in the foothills and making our way up. So let's cut this in half here. There we go, and then one more here. This is gonna be a nice tall window. This one is gonna be a nice tall window as well. Same here, little tall rectangular windows. Nothing too crazy. Like that, see, look. And then finally, these guys here, they almost look like eyes, huh? And hopefully these are creating some bloom with the post-processing. I don't like these. Let's do this. Okay, the only one that's bugging me is that one right there. Okay, and let's take, uh, so let's take this one here scale it down a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do is take this here, and bring it on up. So we're just gonna have these, it's just gonna keep on. Very cool, I, I love this kind of stuff. Um, mixing, uh, obviously, tech with like 1800s, 19, early 1900s. Obviously that's steampunk, right? Um, I love that stuff. Okay, Let, let's drop the opacity down for the top here. I'm actually gonna merge all these together, but I wanna keep the, um, 
the glow. So I'm going to actually remove that and then merge down. There we go. So now we have this glow. And then what you can do is you can just use a gradient and sort of fade out. And also, by the way, I need to fade that out a little bit. There we go. And then um, even you could even do a hue, a hue shift as it goes up. So if it was going up, maybe, maybe we can do a hue shift to maybe red at the bottom. Let's try this kind of hue shift. So it's red here and then it goes yellow. We might want to invert that. <sighs> All right, let's take a, a look at Unity here. Whoops. Okay, I think we need to invert it. Boy, that looks cool. Yeah, I honestly, I don't even think we need that hue shift. So let's go back to Photoshop. My hands are sweaty. Go to Unity. Man, they're really sweaty. Okay, okay that's great. Um, I kind of want it to be a little higher. I kind of want to be able to see it like almost at all times. It's just sort of always looking at you. Um, so what I'm going to do is just scooch it higher. But the back, look at this. It looks like it's invisible now. So you want to make sure you take that edit fill and it's going to fill that sky beneath it. There we go. So that looks a little bit better. So make it higher here. That is what we wanted. That is so cool. All right, let's add the platform. Um, what's What's that place in Dragon Ball where it's this this sort of half sphere? It's an island uh, in the sky, and it's where Goku like trains or something, or he like meets with the elders. What's that place called? Because we're gonna do something like that here, okay? But it's gonna be huge. I'm talking like this, okay? And we're gonna make sure we cut out clouds beneath it so it looks like it's legitimately hanging in the sky. So I think something like this, there we go. Put that right there. This is just to get the shape right. Okay, you can't even see it. Let's just bring it on down. Okay, there it is. So we wanna get, do a very wide squash. Okay, that, that looks like it's working, okay? Now, here's what we want to make sure is happening. We're working with a lot of transparent colors. The hyperbolic time chamber? I, I don't, is that it? It might be. Okay, overall that looks pretty cool. I'm gonna have the base of it fade it out. So it goes into it like this. And then right here though, we're just gonna sort of have it blend in. Oops, wrong color. And then drop the opacity. So we've got this sort of weird sphere. Look at that. Isn't that cool? So it's like, what is up there? What is that? And this is what's really cool. We're gonna add a, it's, it's so funny how things change when you've got them in a skybox. So if you add a line like this, it's gonna look kind of weird here. If I do that, it's gonna look kind of weird. But what we're trying to achieve here is we're trying to make it look like that sphere up there has this massive shadow being cast across The tower. Close, but no cigar. Let's keep going. All right. Very good. Oh, yeah. Something like that. Yep. That is super cool. Okay. Let's see if we can add any 
lights to that Death Star, huh? So we could do... I'm okay with little tiny dots of that yellow hanging out way up there, okay? So like this. And then some circles. It's like, almost looks like it's a... Uh, something from Star Wars. There we go. Drop down the opacity significantly. Jump into unit and take a look. Okay, the one towards the bottom there is causing some problems. It's uh, this one right here. So we'll just delete that one. Save again. And then obviously guys, you wanna fade this out, okay? So we're just gonna fade it out like this. Isn't that crazy? What a strange process. I'm gonna put some wires hanging down. That's gonna be so, so spooky. What a, oh, it's giving me chills. I love it. I love how this looks. Let's keep going. So why not do some wires, guys? So we're gonna do kind of like the Citadel, right? Hey, I'm, I'm willing to admit it. Um, so something like this. Let's just see how this looks, okay? Okay. And just sort of fade them out, see? You don't have to make them connect anywhere. And then just do an overlay. Let's take a look. These kind of details, especially on your first level, are really important. You want the publisher to go, oh, they've got a vision. They've got a vision for this game. We're gonna drop down the opacity of this little friend here. Okay. And this is cool, watch. We'll take this one here. We're gonna scale up the size this is really fun, watch this. And then we're gonna take the whole thing, we're gonna rasterize it. We're gonna make sure it's rasterized at 100%, okay? We're gonna make it look 3D. The way we're gonna do that is we're gonna take this here and we're gonna just move over, transform selection, and we're actually going to try and do a rotation of this selection, just a very subtle rotation and this should allow us to cut out some perspective here there we go select inverse cut so now we've got one coming towards the camera I'm gonna convert that to a smart object though and do something like maybe like this drop down the opacity again like that let's take a look very cool. So just slowly eyeballing it, guys. Save it. Awesome, that is so cool. I think the, the one in the front is a little dark, a little too dark. You gotta be careful, because you can, you can break the illusion with, with the most subtle of changes. Um, so we're gonna go pretty, pretty light here. Save it out, let's take a look. Pretty cool. All right, we're gonna go kind of crazy here. Um, I want to kind of feel like it's a nest of spider webs. This one's going to go behind though. Okay. Some of them are going to be pretty far back here like this.
very subtle. Alright, cool. Should we do anything else, guys? Should we do anything else with this beautiful tall tower? Anything else? I wish you could animate a skybox. I've never animated a skybox before. So I don't know. Okay, overall skybox looks great. I'm trying to think of any ways to make, you know, make it feel a little bit more realistic. I think what we're going to do now is we're going to add some of that um some some moving clouds, okay? So the way we're going to do that is we're going to throw on a quad okay it's gonna be a giant quad right up here so let's do a 3d object quad we're gonna move it up and then rotate it and this quad is gonna allow us to create a sort of cloud texture moving slowly across okay um, so we're gonna do negative 90 so it's flat scale the crap out of it something like this and you really want it pretty close so and even if it intersects with your scene that's okay with objects in the scene the reason why i say that is because hopefully we can give it a soft particle factor a soft particle factor ensures that if it does intersect with something you don't see harsh edges Let's zero out this 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 yeah that's that's probably a better option here there we go okay and then just scale the crap out of it hold on there we go. Really just want it to be as big as the terrain generally. Okay, just like that. Maybe scale it down to about right here. And scale up. Okay. I want to be able to see the underbelly of it. So let's make sure in game view we can see the underbelly. Okay, we can't see it. Let's go to F. Hmm. Give me just a sec here, guys. There it is. Okay, let's bring him down. And by the way, guys, for those of you who are joining us, this week I've been doing, you know, a good amount of ad reads during my live streams. That's because full-time game dev, just for the stream only, the sale isn't happening anywhere else. There's five codes available to join the program. Every time I do these sales, yesterday and the day before, they sold out within the live stream. Um, so if you're interested in joining the program, it's 50% off right now. There's like three codes left. Maybe there's only two click below and I want to welcome those of you who joined yesterday and if you're in my program feel free to say hello in the chat I've got over 3,000 students worldwide here's the clouds here got over 3,000 students worldwide remove the mesh collider um, and I teach everything from securing funding from publishers six figures in funding from publishers I can't make any promises but that's what I did six figures in pub six figures from publishers six figures from Kickstarter and you're doing this before you even finish your game I teach you how to do that and that's that's the I guess the kicker right all right, let's see if we can make some uh, looping cloud textures here. So what I want to do is just see if we've got a cloud texture on the Unity Asset Store. Obviously, there's a lot of places to look for cloud textures, but I'm going to look for a flat cloud texture on the Asset Store. Okay. Here we go. Height cloud texture. Super cool. By the way, the reason I'm focused on this, guys, is because, yeah, that's not going to do it. The reason I'm focused on this, getting the skybox looking really good, is because I was playing the game yesterday, and even though it felt moody, it just felt flat. And so I don't, I don't want it to feel flat. So how about this? Let's just go into Photoshop, and let's create... A looping cloud texture ourselves because I don't really know where we're gonna find one. I'm gonna do 1920 by 1920. <sighs> and what we're gonna do is just do this. Okay? Just give me just a sec. We're gonna try a few things here. Really, we want like a Perlin noise. I could probably just find something on Google. I just don't want to get in trouble. And we're gonna do blur, Gaussian blur. Okay. And then we're gonna save it out. That's all we're going to do for now. I just want to get everything set up. Okay. 
So let's do, where am I? My goodness. There it is. So we're going to put it inside of our textures folder. I'm fine with putting it in the skyboxes folder and this is going to be called looping cloud texture. It's not going to loop properly. Again, right now we're just putting it onto this quad. So let's put the looping cloud texture here. Boom, there it is. Now, for some reason, I can't see it. I have no idea why. Um, it's kind of crazy. I can't see it. I should be able to. I think I'm, oh, it's because it's, let's see here. I think it's lower than it should be, I see. So we'll do something like this. That way, even at the highest point, yeah, 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 there it is. Hey, okay, good. We're gonna set this to be universal render pipeline. We're gonna do, um, I might even go so far as to say simple lit part or unlit particles that we can try that. So it's really, um, come on, Thomas, what are you doing? unlit. It's going to be transparent. And there's no base map. The base map is wrong. We're going to make sure look at that. We got soft particle effects already happening over there. Um, is it, maybe that's not maybe that's just I don't know what that is actually looks good though. Uh, remove matte PSD good. Alpha is transparency good. Hit apply. And then we go back to this texture here. Uh, Huh. I wonder why that's happening. Oh, it's because it's like freaking huge. That's why. So we need to set it to be a bunch of different looping. Uh, can we do that actually? Let's see here. Yeah, you can't do it. So what we need to do is we need to go to universal render pipeline. We're just going to set it to unlit. There we go. Tiling is going to be like 100 by 100. See what we're doing here, guys? Does this make sense? Then what we're doing is maybe, maybe even 50 by 50. Yeah, 25 by 25. I actually really, I like one thing sort of skewed. So let's do five by 20. Yeah, okay. We're also gonna um, uh, set the blending mode to additive or multiply, no, or pre-multiply or alpha or additive. That's what we want. And we're gonna drop down the opacity significantly, okay? And we're gonna have this, we're gonna turn on looping texture. There's a script here, and what it's gonna do is just gonna loop the mesh renderer. Um, so drag the mesh renderer in. The scroll speed's gonna be like something like 25. Randomize it start, no, we don't want that. Let's save it out and take a look. It looks great, um, but it's not moving. So let's, let's see if we can get it to move. I'm gonna do like something like 500 and see what we get. Let's set the Y to 10,000 to see what we get. Nope, okay. So we're not getting any ish, uh, movement here. Let's double check something here. And I'm not even seeing any null reference exceptions, so I wonder what's going on here. <sighs> renderer equals get component renderer. Um, okay, so it's right there, good. Main texture, ah, I don't know if we have something called main texture. We have something called base map. So let's see if we can figure this out, guys. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and figure it out. So, uh, 
shift base. Ah, we don't have a variable for that. That's why. Oh, offset. Okay. So let's go to, we're going to search for um, universal render. I hate this because there's not a lot of documentation for universal render pipeline. Universal render pipeline base offset with code. Does anybody know what we need to do? Can't change texture offset. Okay. Main texture offset. That's the theory. Let's take a look. Hmm. What do I do, my friends? Let's see here. Something, some, for some reason, this isn't working. Uh, Renderer.material.set texture offset main texture. Hmm. I think that, that's how we do it. Main texture offset. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's something like this, and then you go equals, yeah, yeah, uh, new vector, okay. So it's this. Yeah, okay. Then this main texture offset is going to equal this. That's the theory, my friends. Um, I think this is the new, uh, yeah. This is like the new way to do it with URP. I could be wrong here. Um, let's try it out. Okay. Let's see if we can get this uh, sky to move. Good, there we goes. So this looks great. Um, I see no reason why we shouldn't, you know, upload this and have it ready to go and send to publishers. They're gonna love it. Maybe they'll get sent into like such a bad seizure that they'll give me a million dollars. What do you think? Okay, let's set the scroll speed to 0.3. There we go. So even still, I mean, it's, it's moving fast at 0.3. Yeah, good. Point oh. One. Let's try that. A little slow. I want to be able to see it. Cool. <clears throat> okay. It's still a little, still a little slow. I think point oh five. 4.06 is good. Uh, then what we want to do, we want to see if we can get some soft, soft particles. Universal render pipeline, lit. So the lit should have a soft particle factor available to us. Hmm. No, it doesn't. I need soft particles. So we need to find the right shader. There's no soft particles anywhere. There it is. Shoot. So I need soft particles. We need to figure out in the universal render pipeline could we do complex lit maybe? Man, I need soft particles. Hmm. Well, of course it's looking tiled. We gotta we gotta change up the texture. Let's go back in time. There we go.
Hmm. Oh, we need soft particles. Do we though? Let's double check. Maybe we can turn on just camera fading. That's weird. Look at that. It's got like a shine to it. We want to turn that off too. Um, yeah, there's there's some interesting things happening here that we need to figure out. Nature, no. 2D, sprite lit default. Okay. No, it's not gonna work. I mean, even if I, if I made it 50,000 wide, what would happen? Yeah, you're just gonna see it at a square. So what we, what do we need to do here? I don't want to use shader graph. I just want it to work. <laughs> yeah, I wish that uh, there was camera fading. What's alpha clipping? Makes the material act like a cutout shader. Use this to create transparent effects with hard edges between. That's kind of cool. Look at that. How fun. It doesn't do what we need it to do, but <laughs> we can we can hit play and just look at it. It looks cool. Obviously, we're not going to use it though. So turn off alpha clipping. Man, hmm. I thought there were soft particles. I could have sworn there was. So you could do soft particles on looping textures. All right. Let's see here. Well, guys, that's all I got time for today. This was really, really fun. I gotta go, I'm actually training for like a marathon thing in a couple weeks, so I gotta go run some mileage. But I wanted to let you know really quick that if you're interested, I think there's maybe two codes left. If you're interested, you can get full-time game dev for 50% off. This week is a special week, so I appreciate you guys listening to my ad reads. 50% off just for this week, and it's during live streams only. And there's only five codes available today. So today there's, there's five codes, there's only two left actually, so we've, We've sold a few, um, but in my program, you're gonna join over 3,000 students. You're gonna learn how to secure this kind of funding. I can't make any promises, obviously, but six figures in funding is what I've done with crowdfunding, with partners and publishers, and I did all this before I even finished my game. On top of that, I'm gonna teach you how to actually sell your game on Steam, hit the Steam front page, and the cherry on top of all of this is you're gonna learn how to make games too. So you learn marketing, but you also learn games. 2D game, uh, game development, 3D game development, C Sharp, Unity, art. Honestly, it's it's everything I've learned in the last 10 years. Um, it's a 30 hour program. There's also a private Discord server um, with thousands of students hanging out, helping each other out. So if you're interested in joining the program, click below. And honestly, huge thank you to you guys for supporting my channel. This really helps us out but more importantly, it helps you out. It is an investment in your future, and I can say that only because we have great reviews, incredible reviews. Um, someone asked me, Thomas, are they all five-star reviews, really? Well, no, Marcos gave me a four and a half here. Uh, and <laughs> One guy yesterday gave me a zero star because he decided to steal the course and upload it to Udemy, and so I banned him because he took my course and he uploaded it to you to me and so he was mad <laughs> but that's about all i can think of when it comes to bad reviews we have great reviews so anyway guys i'm going to talk to you later this was really really fun i wish you the best of luck on your journey and i always appreciate you guys coming and hanging out with me during these live uh, live streams so i will talk to you later cheers get over here get down. <coughs> hey Thanks for watching. By the way, if you haven't downloaded that free 2D game kit below, click below, it's my treat to you. I used this game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days, 
and I actually got to play it with him in front of his audience, which is really cool. This game kit is totally free. It's my treat to you and you can use it however you want. You can make a commercial game and make a million bucks off this game kit. I don't care. Or you could just use it for a hobby project. It's my treat to you. And by the way, if you haven't clicked like, that would mean a ton to me. Hit subscribe. And also, this is important. Hit that notification bell. Here's why. If you get notified of when I'm live, you can watch me make my next game and let me know in the chat what you think about the game or any ideas you have. And you might just show up, your chat might just show up in the next video that I upload. All right, I'll talk to you later, bye.